Good morning. Well, welcome on this beautiful Sunday morning uh, to Christ Memorial. A uh, special welcome to our guests and those who are online. Um, if you'd like more information about Christ Memorial, we invite you to uh, visit our visitor center in the uh, Narthex. Uh, to members and visitors alike, we ask that you would fill out the uh, We Care cards that are in the pew in front of you. For all of our visitors, there's an excerpt about uh, Holy Communion at the front of the uh, bulletin. I ask that you'd read that before uh, communing. Um, but we invite you to join us uh, if you agree with those beliefs. We have a few um, announcements. The Old Testament class will be held this morning in A112. And Pastor Moreno's um, uh, class will be held in the fellowship hall. Uh, also, we are holding a visitor's assembly uh, following the late service in order to approve the budget. And we will be having our church picnic and VBS celebration after that uh, the, uh, voters meeting. With that, uh, may the Lord bless our worship service today. And please rise for opening hymn number 809, Great is Thy Faithfulness.
We call upon the presence of God to be here with us today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. We pause for a moment of personal prayer and confession. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We now shift forward with our service of the word, reading responsibly Psalm 16. Psalm 16, read responsibly by verse. Preserve me, O God, for in you I take refuge. I say to the Lord, you are my God. I have no good apart from you. As for the saints in the land, they are the excellent ones, in whom is all my delight. The sorrows of those who run after another God shall multiply. Their drink offerings of blood I will not pour out, or take their names on my lips. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in places. places. Indeed, I have a beautiful inheritance. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel, and in, in the night also my heart instructs me. Therefore, my heart is glad and my whole being rejoices. My flesh also dwells secure. You make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
Let us pray. Lord of all power and might, author and giver of all good things, graft into our hearts the love of your name and nourish us with all goodness that we may love and serve our neighbor. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Jeremiah, chapter 8, verses 8 through 22, and can be found on page 636 of your Pew Bible. My joy is gone, grief is upon me. My heart is sick within me. Behold, the cry of the daughter of my people from the length and breadth of the land. Is the Lord not in Zion? Is her king not in her? Why have they provoked me to anger with their carved images and their foreign idols? The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we are not saved. For the wound of the daughter of my people is my heart wounded. I mourn and dismay has taken hold on me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then has the health of the daughter of my people not been restored? This is the word of the Lord. The epistle reading is from Galatians 5, verses 1 and verses 13 through 25, and can be found on page 974 of your Pew Bible. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. For you were called to freedom, brothers. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for the flesh, but through love serve one another. For the whole law is fulfilled in one word. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, watch out that you are not consumed by one another. But I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with his passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also keep in step with the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand to honor the words of the Holy Gospel. Our Gospel reading today comes to us from Luke chapter 9, verses 51 through 62. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the days drew near for him to be taken up, he set his face to go to Jerusalem. And he sent messengers ahead of him who went and entered a village of the Samaritans to make preparations for him. But the people did not receive him because his face was set toward Jerusalem. And when his disciples James and John saw it, they said, Lord, do you want us to tell fire to come down from heaven and consume them? But he turned and rebuked them, and they went on to another village. As they were going along the road, someone said to them, or said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. And Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes, and birds have, of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. To another, he said, Follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. And Jesus said to him, Leave the dead to bury their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord, but let me first say farewell to those at my home. Jesus said to him, no one who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is fit for the kingdom of God. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We now profess our faith together through the words of the Apostles' Creed. 
I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with our sermon hymn, hymn 749, There is a Balm in Gilead. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father, from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and from the Holy Spirit. Amen. Special welcome to those of you joining online. It is great to have you. If you are just watching the sermon, I would encourage you to go back and watch the entire uh, entire service. However, we our main text for today is going to be from the prophet Jeremiah, Jeremiah of the Old Testament. Now, I, I want to say uh, here, I spent the last five days, excluding Saturday, uh, helping out at VBS this year. I was in charge of games, did some stuff during the opening, um, and I, I quickly found out I might be a little too old to be in charge of games as uh, it just wiped me out. Uh, and then on Saturday, I found that I started to come down with a pretty nasty cold. So those, of, the more perceptive among you will notice that perhaps I'm not quite my full self. Forgive me if I don't have my usual same verve and pizzazz that I would normally would. Uh, we'll get through this together, folks. It's going to be awesome. Uh, with that in mind, let's go to God in prayer. 
Lord God, Heavenly Father, Lord, thank you for today. Thank you for this chance to come together and to worship you. Lord, I thank you for the chance to share your message, Lord, and I rely on you that this will be your message. Uh, Lord, I, I am not feeling great, but I trust that you are in control, and we trust that you will speak in this time, and I pray that you will speak. I submit myself to your Holy Spirit, and I pray that all who hear this message, that they would hear exactly what it is that you need them to hear. Speak in this time, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Now, we are wrapping up a series called Dangerous Prayers. It's based loosely on a Craig Groeschel book and Bible study of the same name. Um, and really what we're doing is we're looking at some prayers that we as Christians probably shy away from, but probably should be praying. If you remember the very first week, we kind of laid out the idea of prayer on Pentecost, looking at the Holy Spirit working through us, sometimes even inspiring the words within each and every one of us. And then we followed it up with the prayer of make me bold. Help me to leave behind my comfort zone. Help me to, to step outside of safety and to boldly trust God as we go. Last week, we talked about uh, the prayer, God, I would ask that you speak to me. Now, that doesn't seem all that dangerous to, to ask to hear from God, but uh, be prepared for what God has to say to you. Maybe it's not exactly what you were hoping for. And that's going to lead us right into today's message, the last one of the series and this truly is a dangerous prayer. Today's prayer, quite frankly, can change your entire life, can make your life a lot more difficult, to be blunt. It kind of flies in the face of what has become a certain flavor of Christianity, where it's all about blessings, it's all about living the best life, it's all about being safe and prosperous, right? These prayers that we pray, oh, Lord, bless me. Lord, keep me safe. Lord, may the lights turn green. Lord, let me have the best parking spot possible. Lord, make my life easier. That's not today's prayer. Today's prayer will make you uncomfortable. Today's prayer will perhaps frustrate you, perhaps make your life more difficult. But it is a prayer that we as Christians, as followers of Christ, as God's representatives, the church in this world, we should be praying this prayer daily. And that prayer is, Lord, break my heart. Break my heart. It's a bold prayer. It's praying, God, break it, crush it, destroy me, help me to have compassion that becomes so powerful that I'm overcome by it. We see this throughout the Gospels. As Jesus has compassion upon people, he's so moved that every time it says Jesus has compassion, it's always followed up with some sort of action. He has compassion upon the sick, and so he heals them. He has compassion upon the lost, and so he teaches them. He has compassion upon the hungry, and so he feeds them. See, when we say break our heart, it's about this physical reaction, something that isn't just like, hmm, that's kinda, that is kind of a, a tough thing. No, it is something that gets to our very core. And here's the danger. When you pray this prayer, God will answer it. There's enough brokenness in this world that there will be something that God puts on your heart, puts within your body, puts in your brain that will just eat away at you. In fact, there is a, a Greek word that, it's a good one, it's a $10 Greek word, splachnizomai. Splachnizomai. I want to hear you guys say that with me. There's some good phlegm in there. Splachnizomai. It, it literally means feeling it in your gut. It is a compassion from your internal organs. That's actually the root of the word. Um, that word splachnizomai uh, is actually told in the prodigal son. When the prodigal son returns, it says that, that his father has compassion on him. After he's, he's squandered away the wealth, etc., it says he has splachnizomai, and what does he do? He runs out to greet his son. He is so moved with compassion and love that he feels it within himself. And interestingly, of the 12 times that the word splachnizomai is used in the New Testament, eight of them are ascribed to Jesus. He is somebody who understood and knew compassion. He knew what it meant to have his heart broken. And let me tell you this, you will be blessed 
if your heart breaks over something that the Lord's heart breaks. There's a popular contemporary song, Break My Heart for What Breaks Yours, Everything I Am for Your Kingdom's Cause. It's a bold and it's a dangerous prayer to say, God, break my heart because he will. There will be something that will just gnaw at you and that you will not be okay with just sitting by and letting it happen. Now, the prophet Jeremiah, sometimes called the weeping prophet, very emotional uh, in his thing. We see in verses 18 and 21, uh, my grief is beyond healing. My heart is broken. I hurt with the hurt of my people. I mourn and am overcome with grief. I hurt with the hurt of my people. That's the prayer that we have, that we would have compassion, that the church as Christians, as followers of Christ, the one who had compassion and followed it up with action, the one who had splachnizomai, that internal heartbreak that affected him physically so often that the word is ascribed to him, that we as the church would have that same compassion for things of this world, for the hurts and the pains of where we live. Break my heart. Now, just to be clear, this isn't just saying like, God, give me like a spiritual hobby. Give me, give me a little interest that kind of would, would kind of grab hold of me, something to kind of occupy me. That'd be great, Lord. No, no, this is, this is powerful. This is seeing something and saying, I need to do something about it. And the beautiful thing about the, the family of God, the, the, the body of Christ, is that we're all going to have different passions right? That splachnizomai, uh, that, that broken heart is going to be for different things. I've talked before about my friend Kevin who lives in St. Louis and um, he was downtown one time just as an 18-year-old kid and he saw an entire camp of homeless people. Most people see that and they kind of go the other way, right? For whatever reason, for Kevin, his heart broke and he wanted to help them. And so he went, and the only thing he could do is, uh, just graduated from high school, he went down and got a bunch of dollar cheeseburgers from McDonald's, and he went and just started handing them out. And before long, he had built such a homeless ministry with so many people involved that I kid you not, the city of St. Louis came to him and said, how are you doing what you're doing? Can you teach us? See, when your heart breaks for something, you're moved to action. It's not just, oh yeah, I, I'm... I may have a couple extra cents. Here you go, buddy. When your heart breaks for something, it gnaws at you, and you say, okay, I need to do something to step into this. I helped out with Kevin's ministry there in St. Louis, but homeless, that wasn't what broke my heart. Instead, it was the fact that he had so many high schoolers helping out that they were so interested in helping in their community, and I wanted to encourage them. I wanted to build them up. I wanted to give them the tools necessary to grow in their faith. Out of that group, four of them are in ministry now. See, we have these things that are put on our hearts when we pray this very dangerous prayer of break my heart. And see, here's the thing. This does kind of fly in the face of safe, easy Christianity. The one that you know has the donate now button at the bottom of the televangelist sermon. Right, because oftentimes you'll hear things, uh, uh, if you name it and claim it, right? If you see it, you can be it. If you, all these things about seeking out the blessings of this world. That is the emphasis of so many, because that's, that's sugar to our ears, right? Oh yeah, if I follow God, my life's going to be easier. If I follow God, if I'm a good Christian, then th I'm going to be blessed so much, this is going to be wonderful. That's not what I'm talking about right now. Right now, uh, the reality of our hearts being broken for something can make your life more difficult. And yet, that's following the model of Christ himself. That is having compassion for your fellow man. That is, that is loving your neighbor. One of the two commandments that Jesus boiled it all down to. What if, what if God's greatest blessings are on the other side of God's greatest breakings? What if the greatest blessings that you will see, those greatest moments of fulfillment, come on the other side of a broken heart? Come on the other side of laying awake saying, this is a problem and I need to step in and help with this. For me, seeing those young men and women enter into ministry was such an amazing blessing and it took such a long time 
of work and sweat and tears and pouring into them and being present. There was a lot of work that went in to building that up, and I certainly wasn't the only one. But what an amazing blessing. Perhaps God's greatest blessings are on the other side of God's greatest breakings. See, comfort has never moved anybody to action. Being in a safe space, you're not moved to do anything. I mean, when we're, we're sitting comfortably, we don't even want to get up to get the remote, right? We're like, if only I had the force, I could lure that to, towards me. Comfort leaves you where you are. An object at rest will what? Stay at rest. But moving can be uncomfortable. Movement can be hurtful, can be dangerous. But we as Christians were given a command by Jesus, an imperative, right? One of the last things he said in Scripture to his disciples was what? Go, therefore, and make disciples. And in fact, if you look at the original Greek, it isn't go, therefore. It's actually while you are going. It was almost assumed that we would be going. See, we have a challenge to step outside of that comfort zone, to be bold. And as we are bold, may we have the dangerous prayer that God will break our hearts. And again, it's going to be different for each and every one of you. Maybe uh, for you, your passion is homeless, and there certainly are plenty here in Houston that you could help out with. Maybe it's helping the less needy. You can get involved with MAM, Memorial Area Ministries. There's so many different things. Maybe your passion is for the unborn. And this week was something that you were celebrating, but hey, guess what? Now the real work begins where you get to care for scared and frightened young women who will become young mothers. You get to care for young babies who they're looking at a shelf where there's no baby formula. They're looking and saying, how am I going to afford diapers? How am I going to afford childcare? You get to be part of that too. See, when your heart breaks for something, it's not enough to just say, well, somebody else took care of it, so I'm all good. My friends, we as Christians are called to be compassionate. We as Christians are called first and foremost to share the love of Christ through service. We have compassion, and then we're led to action. I'm reminded of when Jesus is confronted by the woman caught in adultery, right? And here's somebody like, we can all agree that was a bad thing that was happening. That's one of the commandments that she was breaking. There was no question as to whether she was morally right or wrong. But how did Jesus respond? He didn't point the finger and say, you horrible woman, you should have known better. This is going to ruin your life if you don't turn. No, instead, what did he do? The very first thing that he did was condemn those who were condemning her. And then the second thing he did was knelt down. It says that he was writing something in the dust. Perhaps he was just getting down on her eye level, and he spoke to her with love and compassion and grace. And then, and only then, did he say, go and sin no more. We as Christians are called to share compassion. And oh boy, this world will be so much better off if that's what we modeled. Because for me, what breaks my heart what breaks my heart is seeing an entire generation of young people who look at the church and see condemning people. They look at the church and they see an organization that is more about bickering and being right than being kind. They look at the church and they see as we're more involved in politics than we are in helping people. Keep that in mind later when we have our congregational meeting, by the way. <laughs> That's what breaks my heart is seeing an entire generation of young people who don't feel welcome in the church. And I want to do something about that. I have a passion for doing something about that. It's not enough to just say, oh, this is something that we should consider. No, we have to actually start to put this to action. Maybe you have a different passion, and that's great. Be bold. Say the prayer, God, break my heart. God, show me the thing that I can be compassionate about. And then help me to take the step out of my comfort zone to put action to it. That is the call. That is the mission. That is, in many ways, the purpose of the church. This is great. This is awesome that we can come together and sing our praises and worship and, and study the Bible and all that. But if all we do is inside these walls on this campus, then we are not the church. 
We're a college. We're a club. We have our membership. No, the church is to reach out into the community, to be part of the community. And so our challenge, as we pray, yeah, we can pray, God bless me, God raise up this church, God fill this church with more people. But ultimately our prayer, our prayer should be for those who don't know hope. Our prayer should be for those who need to hear a message of good news for them. I recently had the opportunity to go to Rothko Chapel here in Houston. I don't know if any of you have been, but it's, it's like a, an interfaith, non-denominational chapel. And it blew me away because I walked in, and if you've never been, it's a big square room, and there are, I guess you could call them pews, kind of set around. There are also little meditation uh, cushions there around. And the decorations on the wall are literally just canvases painted black. And I walked in, and it was peaceful, yes, but it was also like, this is, there's no hope here. And I wasn't the only one in the room. There were a number, number of other people, and guess what? They were all young, and they were all doing their various forms of prayer. See, people want hope. They want something more than what they know of this world, because when you look at this world, you see hurt, you see pain, you see people fighting with each other. They want something bigger. And the church is failing. The church is too busy bickering with each other. We're not reaching out and saying, hey, you're looking for hope. Guess what? I've got news. Because we have a God whose heart broke for us. We have a God who looked down and he saw as we suffered because of our very sin. Because of the mistakes that we make every single day. He saw the pain and the suffering. And rather than just saying, well, that's too bad. See if I've got any little extra blessings laying around. Here you go, guys. No, his heart broke, he had compassion, and so he did something about it. He came to this earth, he showed what it means to live a perfect life, and that means sharing compassion. That means reaching out to the woman caught in adultery, that means reaching out to the, to the lepers that everybody else said were unclean, that means reaching out to the prostitutes and the tax collectors, that means reaching out to the ones that the religious elite said, you're not good enough. And then, after living that perfect life, he took that perfect life to a place called the skull and gave it so that we can be set free, so that we don't have to sit in a chapel with bleak, black, blank walls and pray to whatever deity might hopefully be listening. We can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that we have a God who knows us and loves us and offers us forgiveness and grace and compassion. Be bold. Say the prayer. Ask God to speak to you. Be ready to listen to what he has to say. and Be prepared as he breaks your heart, as he shows you the hurting in this world, as he shows you how you can be a tool of God, can be an effective warrior on behalf of hope. May God break our hearts and spur us on to action so that we can be his church. Amen? Amen. Now if you'll join me in prayer. Lord God, Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you today and we ask that you would, you would inspire us. We ask that you would help us to leave behind our, our comfort zone, leave behind the safety of what we know, what is familiar, what is easy. Lord, so often we are lured right back into that safety and that security. We pray for safe things, but Lord, you inspire us to do more. Lord, help us to be bold. Help us to pray to you that we would want to hear your voice to speak to us. Lord, break our hearts for whatever it is in this world that you need us to enter in, to be your hands and your feet. And Lord, as this past week, as we had so many kids here for vacation Bible school, they heard the message of the gospel, and I pray that somebody who is helping out, somebody sitting here in this room, somebody watching online, that they have a passion to continue to share that message, to reach out in love, to reach out in hope, because this world, this world is difficult when it comes to hope. And so we ask that you would help us to deliver that. And Lord, because we live in this broken world, there are those who have requested prayers, and so we pray for them here now. We pray for Cheryl, and for Gloria, for Rosemary, for Wanda and Clyde, for Stephanie, for Sue Ford, for Paul and Harper, 
uh, for the, the Dunlap family on the loss of the son and grandson, for Jerry Holmes, for Judy and Donna, for Jeffrey and Kelly, for Joanne and Kristen, for Ruth and Shirley and Kirsten and Bill, for Roxy and Betty Ann and Meryl and Monique. Lord, we also pray a prayer of thanksgiving at the birth of a little healthy baby boy to Julianne Osborne Harmon. Uh, we also pray a prayer of thanksgiving for a healthy baby boy born to uh, Anna Temple Spear, the daughter of the late Tom Temple. Lord, we thank you for that new life, and I pray that they can enter into a world full of compassion and hope where you are present and that your church is active. Lord, inspire us all. Inspire us to be representatives of who you are and what you offer to everybody in this world. Lord, we thank you for the blessings that you give us every single day. Remind us to take those blessings and to share them. That is our mission as the church. And Lord, as we walk around, as we experience this world, as we live our lives, there are so many prayers beyond that list. Though long, it was not comprehensive. And so you taught us a prayer that we get to pray here now, one voice, one family of believers praying together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We're going to continue in worship now by gathering the gifts that God has given us. We're actually also going to drop the screen down because we've prepared a little Vacation Bible School slideshow for you to see all the excitement and all the joy that was happening here on this campus, uh, the opportunity to share the gospel. And I would challenge you, if you helped out, thank you. Uh, if you weren't able to help out this year, it's going to be around the same time next year. We'd love to have you help out. The more people we can get, the better. Um, and I'm going to be kind of blunt right now. I was the only man involved. Just saying, hey, other than our good friend back here, Jacob Hare, thank you, Jacob, did a tremendous job. So uh, just a challenge, just a challenge. So with that said, we gather the gifts that God has given to us every single day that we can then give back to him for the blessing that he gives to others. We continue now in worship.
I want to say a special thanks to everybody who is involved in VBS this week. They did a tremendous job. Pam Manning did a great job putting it all together. We had so many tremendous leaders. We were able to help out and be there with those little kids. Yes, it was exhausting, but it was fulfilling. So what a tremendous blessing. Please stand as we continue in worship. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the very night that he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of this, all of you. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And now may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
Please stand. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We close out with closing hymn 763, When Peace Like a River.